Hi, this is Paula from CHE. These are the news of the week for Shetty Camp and surrounding areas. On today's show, we have an interview with a local motel owner who looks ahead at the next tourism season. Later, we speak with someone from Statistics Canada who tells us about the jobs that will be offered in Shetty Camp for the 2021 census. Also, Université Saint Anne receives funding from the province to deal with pandemic repercussions. But first, we talk about the latest updates on the government's COVID-19 response. On January 11, the Cape Breton Regional Hospital gave the first COVID-19 vaccines in the Eastern Zone. The first person to receive it was licensed practical nurse Darlene White, pictured here. Public health nurse Claudia Oquin was the one who gave her the vaccine. Here, Tracy Nash vaccinates nurse Irene Campbell, also at the Cape Breton Regional Hospital. Healthcare workers involved in the COVID-19 response are some of the first in the province to be immunized. Residents at the Northwood Seniors Home in Halifax also received the vaccine. <laughs> Next week, two long-term care residences in Cape Breton will start immunizing residents and staff. Northside Community Guest Home in North Sydney and Shannox Harbour Stone Enhanced Care in Sydney River. The federal government announced there is going to be a temporary delay in the delivery of the Pfizer vaccine. Procurement Minister Anita Anand said it's because the company is working to expand its European production capacity, but that it will be able to catch up with deliveries by March. Pfizer will be sending fewer doses in each shipment, although the government didn't say how many. According to Dr. Strang, Nova Scotia has already received 13,000 doses and is expecting to receive 140 by the end of March, enough to immunize about 7.7% of the population. It's not until the spring that the province will be getting enough quantities to start vaccinating at large. Starting on January 15th, the province requires rotational workers who work outside Nova Scotia, PEI and Newfoundland and Labrador to take a COVID test. Premier McNeil says public health worries about the number of cases in other parts of the country. We are concerned about the high number of cases in other provinces, specifically Alberta, where many Nova Scotians are working. These are our rotational workers who split their time between two provinces. A number of our cases are connected to rotational workers. Currently when they come home, they are expected to get a test within the first day or two of arriving home and then again within a week of being home. Not all rotational workers are complying and that's a problem because if they are symptomatic and going out without a test, they could be unknowingly spreading that virus. So we had to make a tough decision, but we believe it is the right one. Effective Friday, it will be mandatory for all rotational workers to get tested. Audits will be done, and if they do not get their first test, they will be phoned, they will be called and reminded to get their second test. And if they do not get their second test, they will be fined $1,000 uh, for that. Rotational workers are supposed to follow the 14-day modified self-isolation and now with this mandatory test policy, it is our hope that we can identify COVID sooner. For more details about the modified quarantine requirements, you can visit novascotia.ca-coronavirus-restrictions and guidance. Just this week, the provincial government announced it will be providing a total of $25 million to Nova Scotia universities to help them overcome COVID-19 difficulties. Université saint Anne, the only Francophone university in the province, will be receiving $364,600. President and Vice-Chancellor Alistair Surette said the funds will help cover some of the expenses related to COVID-19, like COVID testing for students, enhanced cleaning and security for campuses. But Surette says that even with that funding, some tough financial years are coming. C'est sûr qu'on a encore des défis financiers pour l'Université saint anne et pour les autres institutions postsecondaires. À titre d'exemple, juste en raison de la COVID, en raison de fermer, d'annuler de, de, les écoles d'été, du printemps d'immersion, etc. Euh, du côté des revenus, c'est un, un gros défi pour nous et c'est la première fois probablement dans l'histoire saint anne qu'on est qu'à présenter un budget déficitaire. Donc, Notre budget est, est, est déficitaire d'environ 1,5 million de dollars. Euh, donc, même avec ce financement ici, on a encore des défis. L'autre défi pour nous, c'est avec les frontières de fermer et des restrictions de voyage. Euh, on a eu très peu d'étudiants internationaux de première année l'année dernière. 
certainement ça va nous causer des défis euh, pour l'année courante, mais pour quelques années à venir, parce que normalement ces étudiants-là restent pour les deuxième, troisième, quatrième années de leur programme. The university announced this week that it will be suspending its French immersion program for another year. 2021 is the census year. In May, the entire population in Canada will be required to fill up the questionnaire. That means there's also going to be job openings. We spoke with census manager Jeff Bowlby, who gives us more details about the post offered in the Shetty Camp area. There's an um, enormous number of jobs available for the census across the country. Uh, census is one of the largest and most complex operations of the federal government. And so there's a lot of people who are needed for this, this effort. Um, we need about 32,000 people to do uh, the enumeration across the country, uh, of which in your area, we need about 17 people. Is that Shetty Camp or Cape Breton? What area do you mean? That's the west coast of Cape Breton. So that Shetty Camp, uh, north to Pleasant Bay and south to Inverness. And what will the jobs consist of? Those jobs are interviewer jobs or enumerator jobs. Uh, the job involves uh, dropping off information to uh, the respondents uh, to the census, uh, dropping it off at their homes, uh, following up with them uh, to make sure that uh, the census is responded to. That's the primary focus of the job. Some of it's telephone based, but uh, uh, all of the people that we need in your area, the 17 folks, uh, will be working from home one of whom will be the supervisor for the other 16. Uh, so there's one supervisor who keeps track of all of the work and 16 people who chase down basically the people who have not already responded to the census earlier in the process. So the census will be done in person or is, or is it online? It's, um, it's done online and in person, but the first stage is to do it online. So if we, go, if we look at the calendar um, in and around the start of May, uh, all Canadians will receive uh, a letter of some sort. Either It will be either mailed by Canada Post or will be dropped off by one of the enumerators that I was uh, referring to earlier. Uh, when Canadians get this, uh, this letter, there'll be an access code and they'll be invited to go to a website. Uh, they can respond to the census online using this access code in this website. It's secure, it's easy, it's a safe thing to do. If, uh, however, we cannot uh, get the response from the person by internet, we will follow up right after that with telephone calls and personal visits to remind people to complete their form. It's important that 100% of all Canadian homes get counted so that we have a proper count of the population of the country. How are you going to ensure that people are safe when they're going door to door? Well, for the enumerators themselves, they'll be provided with masks, hand sanitizer and instructions on how to uh, safely uh, uh, enumerate people uh, at the doorstep. So we'll not be allowing the enumerators to go into the homes. That's been something we've done in the past. So the interviews, if there's any that take place at the doorstep, if it goes beyond a simple reminder to complete your census form and the uh, census form actually gets conducted uh, filled out by the enumerator at the doorstep, it will be outside only, wearing a mask uh, by people who have been provided with other personal safety equipment such as hand sanitizer. Of course, it'll be important to keep social distance, so the, uh, the interview would take place uh, six feet apart. But it's our hope that the maximum number of Canadians, uh, including Cape Bretoners, respond to the census online. That's the safest and easiest, in fact, way to do so. So if, uh, if uh, once people get that access code and that uh, census uh, website available to them, uh, we hope that as many people as possible take up our offer of doing it online. What if most people do the, the census online? Are you still going to keep 17 people working? Uh, yes, we will. What we may, what may happen, we'll need all 17 at the start of the enumeration, that's for sure. Even if we have high take up in the Cape Breton area, we will still need all 17. Um, but uh, what could happen is that if there's a large take up of the internet by uh, people living in your area, then um, over the course of time, we may need less and less so that by the end of uh, July when we expect the census to be wrapping up, we could have very few homes to follow up on if uh, Cape Bretoners in the first place 
took up the internet offer. How many hours a week would enumerators work? Well, that one supervisor that is needed in the area would be a full-time employee and would be working from the months of April to July full-time for us at a rate of pay of around $22 an hour. The others, the 16 that we need would be paid slightly less, the $17 uh, per hour rate of pay. And it depends upon the week. Um, they would be working during that same period of time, that April to July period of time. But depending upon uh, the stage we're at in the process, it could be as low as 20 hours a week. It could be a full-time job for some weeks uh, when we're at our peak. What are you looking for in a candidate? Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, we're not looking for uh, um, a, uh, anything in particular. Uh, everyone that has, is over the age of 18 has a legal uh, uh, ability to work in Canada is urged to apply to our, our job portal. That job portal has been open for the last week. So anyone can go on there now. The, uh, web, uh, the, web, the, the web address is uh, census.gc.ca. Uh, if you forget that, you can simply Google Census Jobs Canada and uh, the link will come up for you. Um, and it only takes about five minutes to apply to our jobs. What about language? Do people need to be bilingual? They do not need to be bilingual, but that is a benefit, of course. Um, they need to, ho to speak either English or French, but if they can speak both English and French, that's uh, of great benefit to us. Uh, it makes our operations a whole lot easier. So bilingual candidates, uh, if, there's, uh, if there's any folks in the area who are uh, bilingual and who are interested, please apply, but it's not absolutely necessary. So what's the process of applying? You said there's a form online. What comes after that? Um, when you go to our website, it's pretty easy. You can see um, a button that says apply now. Uh, in fact, if you're curious about the job, you want to know a little bit more about it, before you do that, on that same page, there's a video you can watch. It's called A Day in the Life of an Enumerator. You can take a look and see what that job really in, in, entails before you hit the apply now button. When you hit the apply uh, now button, it's a simple web-based form. You fill out some, uh, some basic information and you submit it and then you wait for us to call you back. It's a fairly simple process. Shouldn't take any more than uh, five or six minutes to take care of. But is there an interview? There will be an interview for the supervisor position. Uh, for the other positions, not necessarily so. There's reference checks that will be needed. So uh, you'll be asked for uh, two, reference, two references that can attest to your skills. Uh, and we will certainly be following up with uh, the references. But the application and the references may be all that we need in order to decide whether or not we, need to, we, we can hire you as an interviewer. What do you need to be a supervisor? Are there any special skills? We're looking for people that have had experience supervising others. Um, so uh, the one supervisor will be in charge of a group of about 16 other people. Uh, those, those are the folks that will be going door to door. The enumerator won't necessarily have to go door to, the supervisor, excuse me, won't necessarily have to go door to door, but we'll need to keep track of the work of the other 16 people. Um, doing so, uh, they have a tool available to them. So uh, we provide a web portal during our census operations that the supervisor would have access to that would show them where the, uh, the work of their enumerators uh, will be over the course of the day. They'll follow up, uh, contact the enumerators, make sure that they're ready to tackle that work over the course of the day, uh, follow up. Uh, on them, uh, with them at the, at the end of the day uh, and uh, make sure that they fill out all of their reports and submit all of the questionnaires that might have been collected. Um, so uh, that, the, there's uh, no uh, particular um, uh, experience that we're looking for except uh, for past experience supervising other people. One thing I should mention is that the, the jobs that we have available uh, are um, sometimes evenings and weekend uh, shifts that will be required. What we need to do is make sure that we go to Canadians' homes to chase up their uh, census questionnaire at a time when those uh, people in the homes are there. So that usually means uh, some evening and, and weekend work. Uh, so anyone applying needs to be prepared for that.
The thing I should add is that uh, most people who work for us as an enumerator find the job to be a very fulfilling one. The census is an important activity. Um, the census, the population counts are used by government in order to make important decisions such as uh, how much uh, funding should go to hospitals, how much funding should go to schools, where the location of schools, hospitals, and other facilities should be. Private sector uses it as well to make sure that uh, they, are, um, they are serving their communities best as well. So um, you're part of an important and exciting process. It's a very fulfilling job from that perspective. And so I hope that there's lots of folks in your area who apply for these 17 positions. You can apply online at census.gc.ca. Even though the tourism season doesn't start for another few months, local motel owners can usually get an idea by now about what the summer is going to look like. We spoke with Greg LaRock, owner of the Cornerstone Motel and member of the Shirikam Lodgers Association, about how he's preparing for the year ahead. We also discussed the government's latest financial programs for the tourism sector. Right now, we're not seeing a great demand on the next tourist season, so our season beginning basically in the May time frame. And at this point, uh, bookings are very low. Uh, we're not seeing a, a high rate of bookings as compared to previous years. Um, even compared to last year at this time, uh, we're still way down. Um, and we're not getting a lot of phone calls from, a lot of times we'll get direct phone calls uh, just looking for a room that they may not be able to book online or whatever. Uh, we're not even getting phone calls of interest at this point. Uh, so the tourist season right now, if this is any uh, relative direction it's going, it's not a very positive direction at this time. How are you preparing? Well, for the most part, um, we're trying to keep our expenses down and trying to keep as much um, deferred payment as we can possibly do. Um, but uh, we've been doing that from last year and again to this year. So you can only defer payments for so long before they catch up. Um, and that's, that's one of the biggest drawbacks as business is you need, uh, you need to catch up at some point. And at the rate we're going, catch up isn't going to be for quite a while. The federal government made a few announcements in terms of loans. Um, have you been able to access that? What do you think about these measures? So the government did uh, allow for further loans. Uh, we, did, uh, we did take advantage of one, uh, which was the uh, $60,000 uh, loan that they would give us. So we took advantage of that one. All of their loans are just deferred payments again. So it's really, it's going to hurt us in the long run if we take out all of those. Uh, instead, we're trying to find ways to trim and be very lean so that there isn't a lot of extras that we have to pay out um, from, uh, from expenses that we can't, uh, that we can maybe prevent incurring. Um, so at this point, uh, the other loans that they've offered are all loan paybacks and the, the loan paybacks are, uh, get very difficult. Um, uh, they're too easy to be able to take and, uh, too easy to bury the uh, business in debt. And, uh, and if you get too far down, it's either going to take a long time or you'll never get out before your debtors start to come knocking on the door. Is there anything different that you like to see? I would like to make sure that the government understands that they really do need to keep, continue to support the tourism industry. Um, there were some initiatives out there late in the year, but this year is looking like they're going to really need to step up uh, and put some more out on the table for the tourism industry for the first part of the year. Uh, being a seasonal business as we are, we only have a six month period to be able to get whatever income we can get off of our tourism season. Um, we don't have the luxury or the capability of uh, in this area in Chetty Camp to be able to get uh, tourism all year round. And uh, a lot of our buildings aren't, uh, are designed more around uh, summertime use or fall and spring and summer, but not well insulated enough to be able to use in the winter because that's really been a difficult tourist uh, season or we're not a typical tourist destination for winter activities at this point. 
would love to see it. Uh, might make it worth putting more into the building, but at this point, uh, there is no call for that, even though I know uh, Nova Scotia tourism is trying to push winter activity. What do you see for the next season? I see for next season, it's going to be very lean again at the very beginning of the season with the virus still hanging on and the virus is still uh, available or um, easy to catch, getting harder to uh, uh, kill off, uh, and along with that, getting the uh, vaccines and everybody getting their vaccine before they start traveling would be a great thing. That's not going to happen, and I think the government's been pretty clear about that. Um, they're not seeing this vaccine to be uh, effective uh, up to about September. So September and onward, we might see a better season, but I'm seeing a pretty short uh, summer season with very few bookings. Um, at this time, our pre-bookings are almost negligible uh, compared to other years. So that being said, it's going to change uh, the way we do business and the type of business and uh, model we're using presently are going to have to change. Now, I remember that you're part of the Shadikam Lodgers Association. Have you been in contact with other businesses? Uh, what are they telling you? Yeah, I, uh, I try to keep in touch with other businesses. We have a business group. Um, at this point, they haven't given me a lot of feedback uh, as to where they are yet. Uh, some may be away and some may not be responding at this time. But we have, um, uh, generally speaking, from the discussions I've had with other people, uh, their business is much the same. Uh, they're very shallow. Uh, they don't have a lot of um, bookings happening. Uh, none long-term. The long-term bookings are really holding out right now. And I think people are sitting in a wait-and-see program, right? Let's see where it's going to take us. Let's see when it's going to take us. And then let's book it. And a lot of our bookings last year, of course, were locals. And with locals, they were last-minute bookings. Um, rarely did we see too many that were more than two or three weeks ahead of time. So it may still be a little early if we're still locked down to uh, provincial and uh, maybe the Atlantic bubble again, but right now, provincial bookings. So I think people are doing a wait and see. Anything you'd like to add? Nope, I think, uh, I think it's gonna be a very interesting year. I think it's gonna be um, a year that uh, is gonna start off slow and gain some momentum, I hope by, uh, and I'm seeing it more in the August, uh, September timeframe, we'll see a little more momentum which might match up a little bit with last year. Last year's momentum picked up when it was in the October time frame, but it, uh, and again, being very localized. But uh, I think we're going to be uh, pretty much caught in the same rift as we got caught into last year. Those are our news for the week. If you have any stories you'd like to share, you can write to us at tatene.television at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with a view of Shetty Camp over the weekend.